Quest. I'm Trevor Crane, and every week I'm bringing you somebody absolutely extraordinary to help you blow up your business and your life. This week I have got the founder of JV Zoo. This is E. Ryan Brian Rose. Nice to have you here. Good you to be here. Messed up your name there for a second. <laughs> That's okay. My daughter's name is actually Phoenix Rose Crane. So nice. She's a rose. She is a rose. Right. And we're here in Las Vegas, and I just saw Brian speak, and he blew me away because he was just completely funny inappropriate and super freaking <laughs> successful. What I was impressed with, one of the big things that stood out for me was JV Zoo has created over $150 million worth of revenue for our members. Our members have generated that much money. See, this is really cool because I normally see people that are like, you know, look at me, how much money I have made and what I have done, but that's not what you got up to share. But then you're also, you talked a lot about positioning and authority and how that's important for somebody's brand. So how does that work with JV Zoo and somebody building their own authority? It works the same whether you're branding yourself or you're branding a business. Uh, when we started with JV Zoo and we kicked that off, we didn't have a large budget to compete with uh, some of the bigger dogs in, in the same space as us. So what we did is we, we had to think outside the box basically and figure out ways of doing advertising without actually doing advertising. So we started with a $2,500 budget. We threw a party at a small conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we had what was called a step and repeat uh, behind a red carpet, and it had our logo all over it. And in order to get into the party, you had to take a picture in front of this. Right, so something, something like this. this. Okay, Absolutely. Then, okay, okay, cool. Absolutely. And we got everybody's name and Facebook address of the people that were coming to the party and tagged them and threw them up. We had about 180 pictures up there. We had about 200 people show up at the party. We spent $2,500 on beer. Everybody was happy there. We took pictures of everybody inside the party. It was a really small room, but we made it look really, really awesome with pictures. And we started throwing these up on the internet. And it wasn't just for the people that went there. It was for the people who are friends with the people that went there. Mm -hmm. and it shows up on their news feed and they see that they were at on a uh, red carpet you know at this big lavish event you know it seemed like thrown by JV Zoo these guys must have huge money behind them it just looked awesome online and then every time one of their friends clicked the like button all of their friends saw that they had liked a picture and it just spread and we owe that first $2,500 bar bill to our first 10,000 customers to this is what was really cool is watching you speak you guess gave like tip after tip about how you can kind of manufacture the credibility because everybody has to start from zero. Sure. And that's a great example of not having a big budget but getting really creative about how you're going to promote sure. your business. Sure. And the same thing can work for your personal brand if you just start with, um, like, like you said, everybody starts with zero. Mm -hmm. And you might be the greatest at your, at your field, but if nobody knows who you are, they're not going to go to you. They're not going to come to you. You're not going to be the go-to guy. So you have to kind of create that and then deliver on the content later to maintain it. Well, and this is really cool. I liked it because I've heard this before. It's said it a variety of different ways. You know, we're on Grant Cardone's network right now, and he sure. said this the other day when I was watching him on uh, Periscope or something. He's like, who named, like, Grant Cardone is the guy who said, I am the godfather of sales. I That's am. That's right. You know, you, and so go ahead and talk a little bit about that because I, I, I want everybody to get it from different perspectives. I've mentioned this as well as you need to decide what people are going to call you, but this is really, I like your take on it. I'll tell the story that I told on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, it started with a friend of mine uh, named Wayne Allen Root, and Wayne was a sports tout. These are uh, people that make sports predictions, and people pay them good money for it. And Wayne set up this business. Uh, he had a, a TV show every Saturday morning. He had a bunch of NFL uh, people, uh, ex-coaches on his panel with him. And they all had their own 1-900 number that you could call and get sports picks for the weekend. And everybody referred to Wayne as the king of Vegas because he had the best sports picks. He had the best business in the industry. And a few years after he started this TV show, he and I were at lunch and I asked him, I said, I said, Wayne, it is so awesome that people call you the king of Vegas. You have a, um, a star on the Las Vegas Walk of Fame. It even says king of Vegas on it. You know, who first started calling you that? And he just looked around, like, make sure nobody was looking or, or listening. And he leans in and he says, you don't know? I did. And I was just like, oh my God. So simple. Yeah. Just the simplest lesson 
that I learned from that conversation and it has changed my life. And that lesson is call yourself what you want others to call you. Yeah. And it's so basic and it's so simple, but it really works. Well, you got to start with that, which is so cool. Now, how did you use that? Didn't you say that because you, you, you said that there was a part of your business that you do use that same brand? Sure. Because I think this is cool did. that you have the I balls did. to be able My. to do it. Because people listen to this and they're like, ah, bullshit. That sounds like a good story, but show me. So that was your friend, but how did you use it? Well, I started doing a lot of webinars online and I became pretty good at it. So I decided to teach a course on how to do webinars and how I've done them differently than other people. And they were paying me $97 to get this this course. And I'm in uh, the internet marketing business where we rely heavily on affiliates to market your products for them to their lists and their followers. And the way we make the affiliates happy is we provide them with with basically sample sales copy that they can use to send to to their their clients and, and their followers. We call it swipe files. Mm -hmm. Basically, you write the email and they put their affiliate link in it, and that's it. And then they mm -hmm. do the sign off. You know, love John or whatever. You know, at the at the bottom, and. The basically send it out. A lot of them send it out word for word. Some of them, you know, take bullet points out of it. But in these swipe files, I called myself, and because of lack of originality, I copied my buddy. I called myself the king of webinars. And all of a sudden, hundreds and possibly even low thousands uh, number of affiliates started emailing these emails to their followers. As so he, the king of webinars. Right, right. So they would copy and paste, put their affiliate link in, hit the blast button and send out 5,000, 10,000 emails. And this was being done by hundreds of people. So all of a sudden this message was spread all over the space. And we're gonna take a quick break. Hey guys, welcome back. You're watching Greatness Quest. I am here with E. Brian Rose. Uh, we're just teasing that he's been known as the king of webinars and that he is also the founder of JVZoo. We're going to talk a little bit more about JVZoo real quick. So tell, sure. tell us uh, what is JVZoo if anybody doesn't know okay. and how can they make money right away with JVZoo. Yeah. JVZoo is an affiliate platform and what that means is uh, sellers of our product creators of uh, digital downloadable products, whether it's software, ebooks, video courses, membership sites, can list their products on JVZoo. And we have an army of affiliates that will take those products and market them to their followers for a commission. So immediately sell your product, whatever it is, right on this. Website. That's right. When you list with us, uh, there are we have hundreds of thousands of affiliates mm -hmm. that are always looking for products within their niche. Uh, so with, if you're in the health industry, if you're in the weight loss industry, if you're in the internet marketing industry or you know, the, the business to business software industry, people just go into our, our search and look for products that they can market to their clientele and their followers, their email lists. Okay, so I have actually signed up with JVZoo. I did it years ago. I use it very sparingly. I've, I've been, so maybe somebody's familiar with it and they're just not using it very often. So like, I don't know who, I, let's say, um, Mike Phil Same has some products on there, right? So let's say Webinar Jam and a couple of other, other, other things. How can somebody who's not using it very, like much, what can they sell their own products, but they can sell somebody else's products? So what's sure. the fastest way they can take action and coach me on how I can better use JVZoo? I think, you know, you've heard it a million times before, the money is in the list. You've heard that saying, mm -hmm. build a list of potential clients that are highly targeted to the products that you want to market to them. Mm -hmm. And once you build this list, you can market products day and night to them through email. Mm -hmm. uh, the fastest way, of course, is through the squeeze page. Uh, squeeze page is basically a website where you're giving something away, like a free ebook or something free, mm -hmm. in exchange for an email address. Put your email address and instantly download our PDF or our seven page report or our piece of software or whatever. Right. And it's called LinkBait. So this link bait for today's show, we're going to give away something. I don't even know what it's going to be, but I'm going to con you into giving something away. Sure. Go to greatnessquest.com forward slash JVZoo. If you're listening on podcast, we'll po post something really cool. I'll pull that out of you on the next segment. See what we're going to give away. All right. But that'll be our link, our, our lead bait to go ahead and capture an email address. Right. right. And now you have an email address of a person that is interested, maybe in affiliate marketing or something else that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And now you're building a list that you can use an autoresponder for and send out emails 
of products you find on JV Zoo that other vendors are selling that you think is a good fit for your list. And each time a person clicks on that link and makes a purchase, whether it's an ebook, a video course, software, whatever it is, you're going to get a commission. And those commissions range from anywhere from 50% to 100%. A lot of vendors will give away 100% of the product price. So if it's a $47 product, you're gonna make $47. So this is crazy because I've heard this and I know I see it on JVZoo because mm -hmm. it's not like I haven't paid attention, mm -hmm. but I haven't done it. Because I mean, a lot of people think, and I have thought, I need to go out and create my own product, which is a big pain in the ass. It is. I mean, it's sure. not like it's that hard, but there's a lot of things to do. You sure. gotta come up with your logo, you gotta come up with content. Sure. Then if you're gonna be anal about it, whether or not you have the right lights and you have the right sound, and did it come out good, and did I have a zit on my face and all this crap. Sure. So. You do. I do. No, no. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, but this is, you can just go pick a product that you like and then potentially make up to 100% of the profit on that product. And all you got to do is either market it to your list or what other options do they have? They have all kinds of options. Um, not only can you uh, market to your Because let's say I don't list. have a list. Right. Let's say, because okay. I mean, I'm like, oh gosh, I don't, you know, if I have a part time job or I'm, I don't have a big list. You don't have to have a big list. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a big misnomer. People mm -hmm. think, oh, I only have. 200 people on my list, or I only have 50 people on my list, or I only have 10 people on my list. I don't care if your list is one person. You start with one person, and you start mailing them. Autoresponders allow you to drip feed content, which means you set up a bunch of emails ahead of time. Which Somebody, JVZoo will sometimes help provide with the products, right? Exactly. So swipe I don't, files. You, they don't have to write they can it. Copy and paste the, the swipe files that mm -hmm. we call them, and put them into your autoresponder with your affiliate link mm -hmm. in there. And uh, you can set up a series of 10, 20, 100. I know guys that have drip feed content for 150 emails. And that means when someone comes to their website and s puts their email address to sign up to, to receive some free report or something like that, they now have an auto sequence that kicks in. So two days later, they're going to get an email about this. Mm -hmm. Three days later, they're going to get another email about this. Mm -hmm. And so on and for so forth. It it's timed and you set it up one time. That's all you have to do. And now every time somebody comes to your website and downloads that free report, they automatically go into the drip feed funnel. So now somebody without a list and without a product can mm -hmm. go to JVZoo, mm -hmm. basically go shopping sure. and find out what it is that's already selling well, at what price point, at what commission. Yes. And if they have an email list of one person, they can go ahead and just say, I'm gonna sign up for that I want to start selling that product. Mm -hmm. They can then, instead of manually writing an email of, oh my God, you should check this great product they can out. Copy and paste. Copy and paste it, and they'll potentially paste a five or 10 email series mm -hmm. that'll say, hey, did you get this yet? And it's already well thought out. Somebody already put all the energy into right. thinking, what will make, what will help this sell? Now, we'll tell you, this, mm -hmm. is, this, this is the basics of it. Mm -hmm. There, you can get much more intricate about it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, um, believe in the relationship that you build with your list by providing them with content so that not every email you send out is an advertisement for something. Right. So there are people that really build strong relationships with Which their, is probably the with their preference. clients. I mean, this isn't and that's, like that's just definitely spam. the preference, yeah. but I will tell you this. There are other people that all they do is send emails right. out every single day that are selling something, selling something, selling something. Well, does it work? It, their conversion rate is gonna be much lower yeah. than the person who is building a relationship and providing content and uh, you know maybe a few freebies every now and again to their list. However, they're both scalable. Well, and don't a lot of the email copy, doesn't a lot of the email copy now also try to add value or am I making that up? I mean, No, is, there are a lot of good vendors that will put together swipe emails that are very valuable. They, they actually teach something in the email. And I like to do that in every email that I send I would, is yeah. teach something. Hey, here's what you can do. Here's the long way of doing it. And you can probably do it for free like this, but here's the shortcut if you want to do it. And then they're selling this for $27 or something like that. Because I call that goodwill marketing. Make sure that all of your marketing is adding goodwill. So sure. regardless of whether or not they buy from you, they're saying, ooh, I can't wait to get the it, next message. It, it's no different than speaking at an event or doing a webinar when you're selling something at the end. Um, you know, the average webinar does an hour of full content, great stuff. And then based on the credibility that they've built during that one hour of teaching all this free information, free content, they say, hey, look, now I have this offer that pertains to everything that we did here. And, and if you want more, you can buy it. Sure. And for everybody watching right now, we're going to take a quick break.
Fitness Quest, and we were just talking about authority. We were talking about JV Zoo. We were talking about expert fame, actually, on the break, which was your subject matter when we were just when I heard your talk. So, what's expert fame? Expert fame is a fancy term for branding yourself as an authority figure. Everybody that uh, is selling something online has, especially if it's information. You know, we live in the information world, and there's so many people selling courses on this, and membership sites on this, and masterminds on this. They're looking for followers, no matter what niche we're talking about, whether it's how to cure acne, or if it's how to get more customers to my website, whatever it is, people are looking for someone to follow, whatever your niche is. And when you build authority and you are that go-to person, the go-to guy or the go-to girl of your career field, then that is expert fame. So this you just brought up information, and I heard you talk about how information is something that doesn't go out of style. That's right. And so talk just a little bit about that because we're doing, this is potentially information marketing is what mm -hmm. we're how to information sure. how to advice. So because I thought it was a different perspective on how it never goes out of style because sometimes I've thought it's a bit spammy and everybody's doing information marketing and maybe I don't want to get into that but with your perspective on it I thought was unique and it made me feel like it was a really valuable contribution no matter what. I think information is something that never goes out of style because since the dawn of man people have always wanted to know more about everything you know whether it's for curiosity's sake or for business purposes mm -hmm. uh, to better themselves their love life whatever it is you know well, you said even if the economy even crashes. if the economy crashes if rock bottom hits and we're in another recession or or another depression people are going to be looking for what ways to make more money and they'll be willing to pay use what little money they have to buy information that's going to get them more money which is the smartest thing you can possibly do if you don't know how to do something get help sure and and the best way is to I mean you can go ahead and ask your grandma for help but why don't you ask somebody who's already created the result who's actually a professional at teaching you sure. how to do it cool thing about JV Zoo this is just don't you have ratios people can look and see what's already selling well so that yes. they can go ahead and not feel like they're just promoting a product that sucks throwing spaghetti against the wall yeah. right we have uh, conversion charts okay so you can tell um, what the conversion is on these products. Mm -hmm. uh, we have what's called uh, the EPC, and what that is is, um, I'll give the short explanation yeah. of that. Um, if 100 people click on your website mm -hmm. and three people buy it, it takes the average of how much money per click you can expect right. to make. It's your expectations per click. Yeah. Earnings per earnings click or per expectations click. Right. per click. Right. So how many people are you going to have to get to click the button in order to get them to buy? So if the EPC is $1.95, you can be pretty sure that if you send, if you send an email out to 3,000 people and let's say you get 20% to open it and then out of those 20%, say 20% of those actually click on it, you know that each one of those clicks by average is worth $1.95. Okay, so now we were, I, I interrupted your train of thought with uh, expert fame, which I thought was really cool because we're not all going to be, who do you show pictures of? You showed pictures of uh, um, the money girl, what's her name? Susie Orman. Susie Orman, right. Yeah, so she's known right. for one thing. Donald right. Trump is known for one thing. Sure. Who else did you show a picture of? Uh, Frank Kern. Uh, okay, so Frank Kern. Yeah. And also um, Bob Vila. Oh, yes, Bob Vila. <laughs> that was a great one. So we're not all going to have that kind of uh, living room fame. We're going to become a household name, sure. but we can have expert fame. Sure. So around, around. Go ahead and help with what expert fame is. Expert fame is when you become the go-to person in your career field. When somebody is looking for advice on real estate investment, they go to the person that they think is the most knowledgeable about and not that. necessarily in the world it or can in be the country, in your city but in your town in your town exactly right. exactly it can be in your town and you can become the king of real estate investment information right sure you can be the king your of town. how to build birdhouses mm -hmm. in your town and the way that you can do this is facebook allows you to target marketing down to the zip code down to the the people that live in your neighborhood so the, and you can you can basically throw your picture out there for very very cheap as the authority figure in birdhouse building 
so, and so target it, not only to people just in your city of Boise, Idaho, or, or wherever you're, mm -hmm. you live, but only people that want to build birdhouses in Boise, Idaho. Right, so using Facebook, a Facebook ad, because I just met someone who has been watching two days of this event, teaching people, what, where is it, the three C? Capture, create, convert. Helping about, this is about internet marketing, how they can go ahead and, and a business owner can, can create traffic, mm -hmm. capture the lead, you were talking about, that's important, right. that's that opt-in page, sure. and then convert the sale. And the gentleman was just saying, I have a local marketing business for people in Podunk, Idaho, or wherever mm -hmm. it might be, it sure. wasn't Idaho. You know, I don't know why Idaho always gets a bad <laughs> I feel like they're like Podunk. Anyway, um, uh, he was saying that all of his marketing that he wants to do is offline. He doesn't want to use any pay-per-clicks. He doesn't want to use uh, Facebook ads. And I was thinking, I don't understand how he could spend two days watching this. He probably still uses the Pony Express, too. So. I, it's just, it's nuts. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. And he had gray hair like I do, too. It's just very, very interesting. <laughs> but um, so, so, like, if someone's scared of using Facebook, talk, tell somebody right now about how they can target that. Because I... I, I feel like there's a, a block for people who aren't using it. People it, think that they have to build this fan page uh, or business page on Facebook that has tens of thousands of people on it before it's profitable. That's not the case at all. You can build a Facebook fan page for your business or, or, or yourself and start buying ads. Basically, you make a post. Calling on, yourself the king of birdhouse. <laughs> you can call yourself the king of, of birdhouse making or, or popsicle <laughs> stick modeling or, okay, okay. Or, or real estate Which investing. Which was the first or, lesson that you gave. Right, okay. or, or whatever it is. What do you want to that, be known as? you want to be known as. And make a post, just like you would on your regular Facebook account, you do it on, on your new page that you've created. <laughs> Popsicles <laughs> and bird stick <laughs> or whatever. Okay. And then you can promote that post that you've just created mm -hmm. on your business page through what's called Facebook ads. And for pennies per, per click or pennies per um, you know, cost per thousand, you know, CPM advertising, uh, it's very cheap to advertise on, on Facebook, especially if you're highly targeting just one little segment of the population like Boise, Idaho, yeah, or yeah. whatever your hometown is. So now they might they can invest ten bucks, they can invest fifty sure, bucks, they can sure. do two thousand bucks. But and it doesn't. This is why you're saying it doesn't cost much. Right. But they can then target this one particular. And you can audience. measure your results, and so certain posts might generate more dollars than than other posts. And these posts can be you know links to your website, you know with a little re uh, with a little write up before it, mm -hmm. and you can also use it to build credibility. Just making posts about yourself as like let's say the local newspaper put an article about my birdhouses in the newspaper i can link to that and say hey look i am the king of birdhouses you know and just and is it worth spending 10 or 12 dollars so that everybody in the town sees it and everybody knows you and it's repeatedly shown to them on their news feed and who doesn't go to facebook at least twice three times a week most people go two three times a day some people go two three times an hour so this is interesting because I speak at a lot of uh, local events. Where, you know, I, I live in uh, on the East Coast. I live near New York City. I live in mm -hmm. New Jersey, and I'll go to Chamber of Commerce meetings and I'll and I'll speak. Right. And I'll ask how many people have a book, how many business owners have a book, how sure. many people are doing Facebook marketing. It's embarrassing, I think. For, for I'm I feel embarrassed for people that but not doing all of not taking advantage of all of these really inexpensive ways to promote themselves online. They're sure. just scared of the marketing sure. side of it. They don't mind going to a Chamber of Commerce event right. and invest in, I don't know, 200 bucks or whatever it costs to join one mm -hmm. and then going for coffee at the crack of dawn sure. once a week. So what are some other ways? I like to give people some free ways. I mean, paid is great because mm -hmm. that's going to be really targeted. There's mm -hmm. a lot of ways to do it. But what are some free ways that you could give to building authority for that expert fame? Because you, you get great ones. I like to use press releases. Um, Anything you're doing, whether you're attending an event, a conference at, uh, at some, in Las Vegas or wherever, you know, you're flying off somewhere, you know, that's a kind of a big deal. Let's write a press release about it. You know, E. Brian Rose will be attending this event. Now, I'm not talking about speaking at the event. I mean, you bought a attending. ticket and you will be sitting in the audience. But if you write a press release about it and say the event is, uh, is, is 
brings in over 3,000 people uh, each year, and uh, this year's keynote speaker is Frank Kern, or you name some big names that are going to be keynote speakers there, and all you did in this press release is say, I'm going to the event. Now, the reader doesn't look at it as, oh, he bought the ticket. The reader is going, this guy's important enough that somebody wrote a press release telling the world where he's going to be. Things like that. You can write press releases about anything you do. You have a new product coming out, put a press release out. And this is what we call seeding the web. When you seed the web with authority like things like this, another great one is to um, nominate yourself for business awards. <laughs> I love that one that you gave. <laughs> so we're on stage and you showed, uh, you said Google yourself, right? right? So you showed a screenshot of your Google site, of your uh, it's page one, and the last one on the page, like 10, number 10 or something, was an award that you'd been nominated for. Mm -hmm. And it was your LinkedIn page and your Facebook page. And so what's cool is that some of these free strategies like the press releases and whatnot can help those rank, right? Sure, because be these are, these are uh, websites that already have a lot of clout within Google. So they have Google authority. So when you post something on them and somebody does like a press release that has your name in it and somebody does a Google search for your name, it's going to pull from the authority sites first. So these PR sites, these business awards sites. So, okay, so tell the business award. Just a you little bit. You tell the story. Okay, so, so this was great because I was watching you on stage actually tell the story and you're going through all your credibility parts on, the, on, on that page under the, the, the guise of like anybody can do this, not right. like tooting your own horn. But you're like, what I love is this one where I get, I'm nominated for XYZ Business Award or whatever mm -hmm. it was. And then after telling people just about the credibility factor of the whole thing and how important it is, he asked the question of, uh, Brian said, you know, and who do you think nominated me for <laughs> that award? Because it didn't say you won. Right, it sure. It said nominated sure. for, but the prestige and clout is great. And then you can point to it on your website. You can mention it in your Facebook post sure. about if you being, I don't know why you mentioned the birdhouse building thing, but it could be, right? It could have been right. sure. pointing to it. And now you get as seen on Fox Business News, ABC, NBC, wherever, wh wherever that press release is gone, sure. you can now use that as more credibility on your site. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brilliant stuff. All right, so we have a couple more minutes here just to finish things up. Um, talk about what would be a great free gift that we could give everybody uh, that would be valuable. I just finished a, uh, a, a short ebook called Seven Steps to Expert Fame, and I would like to give that to your audience. That would be great. Okay, seven steps to expert fame. Mm -hmm. Can you give one of those away? Maybe you already gave one away. I don't know. Uh, I'm, gi I'm giving one away. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I think you should just wait because I'm going to describe the Lorenzo von Matterhorn in oh, great detail. So that, it's worth just downloading. The, Lor the Lorenzo that. von Matterhorn mm -hmm. is totally worth it. So. Mm -hmm. You've got to go get this. Go to greatnessquest.com <laughs> forward slash JVZoo. And other than looking on Google for, actually, I didn't ask you what the E stands for. So E, Brian Rose, what does E stand for? Awesome. E stands for awesome? <laughs> Sounds like it. E is my name my mother gave me, Eric. So I was, I was expecting something. Brian is my middle name. And Bri okay, so, so I was expecting when I'm, uh, I heard T. Harvecker talk about this. Do you know what the T stands for in T. Harvecker? I do not. Do you know who T. T. Yes. Harvecker is? Okay. So he wrote the, uh, what's his book called? The um, Secrets oh, of the Millionaire right. Mind? Something like that. Something like yeah. that? So uh, at any rate, I remember him telling like what the T stood for. The T was just he wanted to stand out and be different. Mm -hmm. So he just gave himself a T. Because he's like, well, he didn't want it to be just Harvecker, he was like, I want to be, T stands for the that's Harvecker. That's exactly just what I Just made did. it that, up. That's exactly what I did. I didn't make it up. I took my middle name, mm -hmm. and when I started writing and I started getting into the spotlight, um, there were other people that had my name in, in various sports. There were some athletes, there was a, there's a driver, there's a boxer, there's a baseball player that all have the name, uh, the, my last name, um, and it, I wanted to stand out. Uh, when you have a name that's common, like if your name's John Smith and you want to be an author or you want to be somebody that's found on the internet easily, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but you have to come up with a nom de plume. You have to come up with yeah. a, a pen name. Uh, cool. You're going to have to change your name from John Smith, you know, just for professional purposes, of course. Um, but th there's nothing wrong with pen names. Um, you know, some of the most well-known authors in the world in history sure. used pen names, you sure. know, Samuel Clemens. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Mark Twain. Mark Twain, there that's right. Yeah. 
So it's a good thing I knew that or I'd have been looking at the <laughs> asshole. <laughs> That's all right. At least you threw me a softball there. I could go ahead and nail that one. All right, so um, make sure you go check out. At, actually, what should they do about JVZoo? So if you told people what to go. Oh, sure. Go to JVZoo.com. Sign up as an affiliate. Um, learn the learn the landscape. Uh, we have a great forum. Uh, we have a um, uh, not only our, our tech support forum, but we also have a great Facebook group mm -hmm. where people can mastermind and ask questions. It's newbie friendly. If you have any questions whatsoever, you know some of the experts hang out in the Facebook group. So once you sign up, you get an email with a link to the Facebook group, and you can get all uh, everything you need there. I need to do that honestly because it's just you know there's so many resources we have these days mm -hmm. to occupy our time. Sure, it's just one more thing I haven't given focus to, but. By the time anybody watches this, I, I want to go figure it out because I've got products and services I want to sell and I haven't yet posted any there. Mm -hmm. And it's BS. Got to do that. I, I don't like just what I what I really I'm going to go back to this one last thing just before we finish up. I, what was really the reason I wanted to bring you, Brian, is he is so much freaking fun. You should have <laughs> seen him on stage. You can't you got to check out his ebook uh, with the uh, what was the guy's name? Vaughn. Matterhorn? Oh, Von, yeah. <laughs> Ludwig, was it? No, no, it it Lorenzo. Von, Lorenzo, Von Lorenzo Von Matterhorn. Von Matterhorn. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious, but uh, it's a strategy that you can use to, for, your, for your authority brand. But it's also, the, it's so cool that you're doing stuff that is helping the entrepreneur, mm -hmm. that this is a money-making piece, and you didn't stand up and you're not like beating your damn chest. Look, you're like, I'm suited up. <laughs> you're, what your shirt says, do good this, stuff. <laughs> this is actually a shirt um, that was uh, created by Joel Com. Uh, yeah, Joel Combs, a New York Times bestselling author. He wrote the AdSense code. Yeah. Uh, he wrote Twitter Power. Um, uh, Twitter Power 3.0 just came out, actually. Uh, bestselling author. And he came up with this logo with, I guess that's his face right there. Do good stuff. And he sells these T-shirts. And uh, See, look at this guy. Yeah. He's like, you, you're, you're Mr. Promotion. Let's promote <laughs> everybody else. You're freaking awesome. All right, so thank you so much for being here. And any last words for anybody watching right now? Do good stuff. That's cool. <laughs> do good stuff. Get out there, do it. Thanks All right. for being here, my hey, friend. Hey, great to be you here. Got it. All right. All right. You're watching Greatness Quest. I'm going to be back here next week with somebody extraordinary to help you blow up your business, take it to the next level. And it's going to be somebody else who's freaking awesome. Not as awesome as this, though. I don't know <laughs> that they can handle that. <laughs>